Hey there. So um, a couple of people on the Unreal Tournament forums wanted to see my fire in motion, and a couple others wanted to see a tutorial. So why don't I kill two birds with one stone and give you a video tutorial with my fire in motion? So this is the fire material. It's actually a tessellated geometry shader. So what you're looking at is real geometry. If I were to go into wireframe mode, you'd see sort of behind the scenes what's going on. So I may have been unintentionally misleading by saying that this material sets everything on fire that you assign it to. Rather, it turns everything that you assign it to into fire. So this is actually two meshes you're seeing here. There's the Tay mesh, um, Evil Tay, and then there's the fire mesh. So basically they're the same geometry except for one has the fire shader assigned, one has the normal shader assigned. So all you do is duplicate the mesh, assign the fire to the duplicate, and then move the duplicate back. There's probably an easier way to do this with blueprints, and of course if you have a character in motion with skillful animations, that's a pretty clumsy way to do it. But for now, that's the way I've implemented it and showed it off. So what exactly do you have to do to get fire going? Well, let's have a look. Let's assign a, uh, bring a mesh out and assign a fire material instance to it. So we've got the skeleton. I think the skeleton looks really cool, really uh, sort of devilish once you put it on fire. So let's rotate him. It's a really spooky skeleton. Skeleton that's all gooey, like he recently been charred on a barbecue. He's a pretty cool looking skeleton. Really cool asset. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate Mr. Spooky Skeleton and then we're going to assign the fire shader. We're not just going to assign any fire shader, we're going to assign a material instance of the original uh, shader. So we're going to assign that material instance there, so that's the Spooky Skeleton now on fire. So we put that back, so you get the idea of what's going on with this Spooky Skeleton that's now on fire. Let's have a look at some of the parameters that we can adjust with the material instance. So the first thing's pretty obvious. You can adjust the color of the fire to suit your needs. There's the first parameter, which is the fire base, which is the main color that the fire is going to be. And then there is the fire mod, which I'll show you. It roughly changes the tint of the fire. It doesn't affect the color as much as the fire base, but it does have a nice sort of highlight. I'm just gonna turn those back in. And then you have a wind direction. So a wind direction is a vector, RGB vector, inside the material editor, but it represents X, Y, Z in world space. So if you turn the blue up, that's like turning the, the Z direction up. This is gonna push the wind extra in that direction. So now that I changed it to a value of one, it's pushing the fire in that direction a heck of a lot more than before. This is a bit unrealistic, unfortunately. So we turn it down to say 0.3, or you can even go crazy and have it like negative 0.3, and the flames are going downward now. So you can play around with that, and of course, because it's a real-time parameter, you can edit it in runtime. So you can have it so that when a character gets blasted with a flamethrower, the wind is being blasted to the side. It's a bit like, say, like that, so they can get blasted to the side, or you can really, really go crazy and like put a value of 20 there and has like crazy comet like uh, tail on it. So that, you know, it, it's, it's there, you can do it, but any values between say, you know, zero and 0.5 are, are realistic, nice looking fire. So let's put this back at a sort of believable uh, 0.5 with a bit of a negative. Uh, X uh, point one that makes it look like it's going slightly back. Now there's two other um, scalar parameters you can adjust, which is the fire speed, so we can turn it up. So it's in fast motion. So if you combine that with a really powerful wind direction, it can make it look like somebody's being blasted with fire. Or if you want it to be more slow motion, you can give it a a lower value, and it makes the fire. Uh, the, the textures controlling the fire displacement move really slowly. So that's a pretty basic parameter, but it can have a pretty drastic effect, especially if you're going for something more dramatic. So, turn that back to a value of one. The other one is the engulf scalar. So the engulf scalar, the lower you, um, the lower you set it, the more engulfed the mesh is. So I'm setting it lower and lower. Um, we're at a value of about one right now. So as you can see, the skeleton is incredibly engulfed in flame. 
I think realistically, especially for very, very um, convex meshes, a, a higher value actually looks a bit more realistic. So a value of say 50 to 20, so this is a value of 20. I think that looks a bit more realistic, which is why I added it in so you can have control. Um, but like I said, because it's a real time scalar, you can have an effect where somebody gets blasted and then slowly, slowly burns out. Um, and then if you turn the value high enough, it completely disables the fire. Um, or if you just want somebody for comic relief to just have a, a bit of themselves on fire, you can do that as well. But anywhere between, say, uh, 5 and 20, so that's a value of 20 right there, looks pretty realistic. Anyway, show me what you can do with this fire material, because I think it's uh, a pretty cool step in the right direction. It's by no means final. I want to add some more control over it, like the ability to be able to adjust the fire via vertex colors, because I think that would be really useful. It's just that I don't have any assets with custom vertex colors yet. So that's a cool feature I want to add in the future and just a bit more control over how the flames look. But show me what you can do with the fires. Show me what various things you can set on fire. Um, and thank you very much for watching my video tutorial, and I'll see you next time.